in the scorching summer of 6891 BCE, Siena, Italy, was a hub of activity, its sun-baked hills buzzing with merchants and traders from far-flung lands. The Neolithic era was in full bloom, and the region's bustling marketplaces were the epicenter of commerce. However, beneath the vibrant surface, a crisis was brewing one that would shake the foundations of the trade networks and send ripples throughout the Mediterranean. At the heart of the crisis lay the prized obsidian, a glossy, dark, glass-like mineral coveted for its razor-sharp edges and mesmerizing beauty. For centuries, Iena's skilled craftsmen had fashioned exquisite tools, jewelry, and ceremonial objects from this precious commodity, making the city the primary supplier to the elite of the ancient world. The obsidian trade was the lifeblood of Siena's economy, with merchants from Egypt, Greece, and Mesopotamia flocking to its markets. But a perfect storm of factors was about to disrupt this lucrative trade. A severe drought had struck the region, withering crops and depleting water sources. As the people of Siena struggled to survive, the usually reliable obsidian mines began to falter, their yields dwindling to alarming levels. The once abundant mineral, which had flowed like a river through the city's veins was now scarce, and the consequences were dire. Panic set in as merchants and traders faced shortages and skyrocketing prices. The bustling marketplaces fell silent, as if the life had been drained from them. The city's artisans, who had honed their skills over generations, were left idle, their workshops empty and still. His economy teetered on the brink of collapse, and the repercussions were felt far beyond its borders. As news of the obsidian shortage spread, a ripple effect was felt throughout the ancient world. Merchants and traders sought alternative sources, sparking a frenzy of exploration and exploitation. The tranquil landscapes of the Mediterranean were suddenly awash with prospectors, each seeking to strike it rich by uncovering new obsidian deposits. Peaceful relations between neighboring cities and states began to fray as rival factions vied for control of the remaining obsidian sources. In the midst of this chaos, the enigmatic and ruthless obsidian cartel emerged. A shadowy organization of merchants and traders, they saw opportunity in the crisis and moved swiftly to capitalize on the shortage. With, with their vast networks and resources, they began to hoard the remaining obsidian, manipulating prices and supplies to their advantage. The people of Siena, who had once been the masters of their own destiny, were now at the mercy of these cunning operators. As the crisis deepened, Siena's social fabric began to unravel. The once unified city was now riven by factionalism and strife, as different groups vied for control of the remaining obsidian resources. The city's rulers, who had grown complacent in their prosperity, were caught off guard by the sudden turn of events, and their authority was challenged by the rising power of the obsidian cartel. The very future of Siena hung in the balance, as the city teetered on the brink of collapse. In the end, it was not the obsidian itself that proved to be the solution, but the resilience and ingenuity of the Sienese people. As the crisis reached its climax, the city's artisans, merchants, and rulers came together to forge a new path forward. They invested in new technologies, developed alternative industries, and forged alliances with neighboring cities to diversify their economy. The obsidian crisis, though devastating in its impact, ultimately proved to be a catalyst for growth and transformation as the people of Siena adapted and evolved in the face of adversity. In the sweltering summer of 6891 BCE, Siena, a thriving Renaissance Italian city, pulsed with activity. Merchants and traders from far-flung lands converged on the bustling marketplaces, their vibrant silks and exotic spices wafting through the air as they haggled over the finest obsidian a prized volcanic glass coveted for its razor-sharp edges and mesmerizing dark beauty. For generations, Siena had been the epicenter of the obsidian trade, its strategic location at the crossroads of the Mediterranean, facilitating the flow of this precious commodity to the farthest reaches of the ancient world. As the days passed, however, a sense of unease began to seep into the city's narrow streets and grand piazzas. Shipments of obsidian normally arriving with clockwork regularity, began to dwindle and then suddenly ceased altogether. The usually ebullient merchants, accustomed to flaunting their latest acquisitions, now gathered in hushed whispers, their faces etched with worry and concern. The Sienese obsidian crisis, as it would come to be known, had begun.
Rumors of a catastrophic eruption on the distant island of Lipari, a major source of the prized glass, began to circulate. The volcano's fury had been unleashed, spewing forth a torrent of molten lava and ash that had buried the obsidian mines beneath a thick, impenetrable layer of rock and debris. The news sent shockwaves throughout the trading community as the realization dawned that the very lifeblood of their commerce was under threat. As the days turned into weeks, the effects of the crisis began to manifest. Artisans reliant on the obsidian for their craft found themselves idle, their workshops silent and still. The once thriving marketplaces, now devoid of the coveted glass, took on a desolate, abandoned air. The city's coffers, too, began to feel the pinch, as the lucrative taxes generated by the obsidian trade began to dry up. In the midst of this turmoil, a small band of intrepid traders, driven by desperation and ingenuity, set out to forge new trade routes, seeking alternative sources of the precious glass. They braved treacherous seas and unforgiving landscapes, their caravans winding their way through the rugged hills and valleys of the Italian peninsula. It was a perilous, often deadly endeavor, but one that held the promise of salvation for the beleaguered city. As the seasons passed, the people of Siena held their collective breath, awaiting the outcome of this high-stakes gamble. Would the traders succeed in their quest, or would the Sienese obsidian crisis prove a fatal blow to the city's prosperity? The fate of Siena, and indeed the entire Renaissance Italian economy, hung precariously in the balance as the world waited with bated breath for the resolution of this pivotal event. In the sweltering summer of 6891 BCE, Renaissance Italy's sun-scorched hills hummed with activity as the Neolithic era reached its zenith. Amidst the thriving communities, a sense of unease settled over the people like a shroud cast by an unseen hand. The crisis unfolding would soon shake the very foundations of their existence, and at its heart lay a humble yet vital material obsidian. In this ancient world, obsidian was the lifeblood of tool-making and ceremonial objects. Prized for its razor-sharp edges and mesmerizing beauty, skilled craftsmen would travel for days to procure the finest quality obsidian from distant volcanic regions where it was forged in the fiery depths of the earth. Its value extended beyond the practical, as it was believed to hold mystical powers connecting the people with their ancestors. As the crisis began to unfold, the bustling marketplaces fell silent. The sound of hammering on stone and merchants haggling were replaced with an eerie stillness. The obsidian supply, once a constant flow, had slowed to a trickle. Toolmakers struggled to create even the simplest instruments, while farmers watched in despair as their crops withered and died, their obsidian-tipped sickles now useless. The once thriving communities teetered on the brink of collapse. In the ceremonial centers, the absence of obsidian was felt just as keenly. Sacred objects adorned with intricate obsidian inlays lay, incomplete and powerless. Shamans reliant on these objects to communicate with the spirits were rendered mute and ineffective. The people accustomed to the comforting presence of these ceremonial objects felt abandoned and lost. As desperation grew, messengers were dispatched to the distant obsidian mines, but they returned empty-handed, bearing tales of rival tribes and marauding bands that had seized control of the precious resource. The people of Renaissance Italy were forced to confront the harsh reality. Their way of life was under threat, and the very fabric of their society was beginning to unravel. A sense of nostalgia washed over the people as they remembered the stories of their ancestors who had first discovered obsidian's magical properties and woven it into the fabric of their culture. They recalled the great obsidian-lined temples where their forebears had performed rituals and made offerings to the gods. The crisis had awakened a deep sense of loss and longing as the people realized their connection to their past was slipping away. As the obsidian crisis deepened, the people were forced to confront the fragility of their existence. They had grown complacent, relying on the steady supply of this precious material to sustain their way of life. Now, as the obsidian flow slowed to a trickle, they were compelled to confront the harsh realities of their world. The crisis would ultimately prove to be a catalyst for change, as the people of Renaissance Italy were forced to adapt, innovate, and forge a new path forward. But for now, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the landscape in a deep obsidian-like hue, the people could only stand in silence, wondering if their world would ever be the same again. In the sweltering summer of 6891 BCE, 
Siena, Italy was a hub of activity with merchants and traders flocking to its bustling marketplaces to exchange goods from far-flung lands. The Neolithic era was in full swing and the region's commerce was thriving, however. Beneath the vibrant surface, a crisis was brewing one that would shake the foundations of the trade networks and send ripples throughout the Mediterranean. At the heart of Siena's economy lay the obsidian trade, a coveted volcanic glass prized for its razor-sharp edges and glossy sheen. Artisans crafted exquisite tools, jewelry and ceremonial objects from this precious material sourced from the distant island of Lipari. The Sienese obsidian, renowned for its exceptional quality, was the gold standard of the ancient world. As the summer solstice approached, whispers of an impending shortage began to circulate among the merchant guilds. Rumors of a catastrophic eruption on Lipari, which had ravaged the obsidian quarries and disrupted the supply chain, sent shockwaves through the market. Panic set in as traders scrambled to secure their stockpiles, driving prices to exorbitant heights. Amidst the chaos, a group of enterprising Sienese merchants, led by the cunning Alessandro di Firenze, saw an opportunity to capitalize on the crisis. They formed a cartel, pooling their resources to corner the market on the remaining obsidian stockpiles. With their stranglehold on the supply, they began to dictate prices, squeezing smaller traders and artisans to the brink of bankruptcy. Tensions escalated, and the streets of Siena became a battleground. Protesters comprised of disgruntled artisans and merchants clashed with the cartel's hired guards, who were determined to protect their master's interests. The air was thick with the smell of smoke and sweat as the two factions faced off, their passions fueled by desperation and greed. In the shadows, a mysterious figure emerged, Kale, a Lipari native who claimed to possess uh, knowledge of a hidden obsidian cache untouched by the devastating eruption. Kale's whispers of a secret stash sparked a frenzy of speculation as traders and artisans alike clamored for a glimpse of the precious material. Alessandro di Firenze, sensing an opportunity to further consolidate his grip on the market, dispatched a team of trusted emissaries to negotiate with Kale. The enigmatic Liparian, however, proved to be a cunning adversary, driving a hard bargain that would have far-reaching consequences for the entire region. As the crisis deepened, the Sienese authorities struggled to maintain order. The city's governor, the wise and aged Giovanni de' Medici, convened an emergency council to address the growing unrest. Amidst the heated debates, a radical proposal emerged to establish a new trade route bypassing Lipari and tapping into the rich obsidian deposits of the distant Anatolian plateau. The Sienese obsidian crisis, as it came to be known, would ultimately prove to be a turning point in the region's history. The crisis would spur innovation as artisans and traders adapted to the new reality, seeking out alternative materials and forging novel trade alliances. The once mighty obsidian cartel would crumble its grip on the market broken by the emergence of new players and the shifting tides of commerce. As the dust settled, the people of Siena gazed out upon a transformed landscape, one where the rhythms of trade and commerce had been forever altered. The obsidian, once the lifeblood of the region, had become a relic of a bygone era, a reminder of the transience of power and the indomitable spirit of a people who had weathered the storm. In the lush hills of modern-day Siena, a Neolithic tribe flourished, renowned across the Italian peninsula for their exceptional mastery of obsidian craftsmanship and trade. The Sienese people, as they came to be known, embodied innovation and artistry, coaxing beauty and utility from the dark, glassy stone with skilled hands. As one wandered through the Sienese settlement, the air vibrated with the sounds of chiseling and polishing the earthy scent of obsidian carried on the breeze. Generations of artisans had refined their craft to an art form, guarding their techniques and secrets with reverence. Obsidian, a volcanic glass of deep, mysterious hue, was their medium of choice, its conchoidal fracture pattern yielding razor-sharp edges that sparkled like the night sky. At the heart of, of the settlement, a bustling marketplace pulsed with activity as merchants and traders from far-flung regions converged to acquire the Sienese people's coveted wares. Delicately crafted obsidian blades, etched with intricate patterns, lay alongside gleaming arrowheads, precision honed for the hunt. Exquisite jewelry, fashioned from obsidian's dark beauty, adorned the necks and wrists of the tribe's women, their eyes aglow with pride. The Sienese people's expertise extended far beyond craftsmanship, however,
They were master traders, their extensive network of routes and alliances woven across the Italian peninsula, like a rich tapestry. Caravans laden with precious obsidian goods wound their way through the rolling hills as the Sienese people's reputation for fairness and integrity earned them the trust of their counterparts. In the midst of this thriving commerce, the Sienese leaders, wise and visionary, oversaw the distribution of their precious resource with a keen eye. They knew that the key to their prosperity lay not only in the quality of their craftsmanship, but also in the strategic management of their obsidian reserves. The tribe's elders, gathered beneath the shade of ancient olive trees, would deliberate for hours. Their voices hushed in discussion as they balanced the demands of their customers against the need to conserve their most precious resource. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the Sini settlement in a warm golden light, the tribe's people would gather beneath the stars their stories and songs woven around the legend of their obsidian heritage. It was a time of plenty of prosperity and of pride, for the Sienese people knew that their expertise in obsidian craftsmanship and trade had elevated them to a position of prominence, their name synonymous with excellence throughout the land. Little did they know, however, that the very fabric of their existence was about to be torn asunder by a crisis that would shake the foundations of their world. As the sun rose over the Italian peninsula's rolling hills, Siena's bustling markets sprang to life. Merchants and traders, clad in worn leather aprons and carrying sturdy wooden crates, converged upon the city's central square. Amidst the cacophony of haggling and laughter, one commodity stood out, obsidian, the prized volcanic glass coveted by Neolithic tribes and settlements across the land. The Sini's obsidian trade network, a labyrinthine web of connections and alliances, stretched from the snow-capped Apennines to the sun-kissed Mediterranean shores. From Tuscany's rugged hills to Campania's fertile plains, Sini's merchants had established a vast and intricate network of trade routes, carefully nurtured over generations. In the north, strong bonds with the Ligurian tribes granted the Sienese access to the prized obsidian quarries of the Maritime Alps. Hidden deep within mist-shrouded valleys, these quarries yielded some of the finest obsidian in the region, prized for its razor-sharp edges and glossy dark sheen. Sienese merchants braved treacherous mountain paths and raging rivers to secure shipments of this precious commodity. To the east, trade agreements with the Adriatic tribes secured strategic ports on the Adriatic Sea. Skilled sailors and navigators, the Adriatic tribes transported Sini's obsidian to the distant shores of Illyria and Greece, where it was highly prized by the emerging city-states of the Aegean. In the south, alliances with the Campanian tribes granted access to the fertile plains and volcanic regions around Mount Vesuvius. Masters of the land and its secrets, the Campanian tribes supplied the Sienese with obsidian from the region's numerous volcanic quarries, as well as exotic goods from the African and Asian trade routes. At the heart of this vast network lay the city of Siena, a bustling hub of commerce and industry. Here, artisans fashioned the prized obsidian into a dazzling array of tools and trinkets razor-sharp knives and arrowheads, polished mirrors and ornate jewelry, and even ceremonial blades and ritualistic artifacts. As the Sienese obsidian trade network expanded, it drew in a diverse array of Neolithic tribes and settlements, each with their own unique cultural practices and traditions. The network became a vibrant tapestry of exchange and cooperation, woven from the threads of commerce, diplomacy, and mutual respect. Yet beneath the surface of this thriving trade network, tensions and rivalries simmered. The Sienese, masters of the obsidian trade, had long been wary of rival tribes and settlements seeking to challenge their dominance. As the years passed, these tensions would escalate, ultimately culminating in the Sienese obsidian crisis, a devastating trade disruption that would shake the very foundations of the Neolithic world. As the sun dipped below the rolling hills of Siena, a warm orange glow enveloped the ancient city, casting a sense of tranquility over its bustling streets. The air vibrated with the cacophony of merchants hawking their wares, the clanging of hammer on anvil, and the gentle chatter of townspeople going about their daily routines. It was a typical summer evening in the Neolithic era with the promise of a bountiful harvest and a thriving trade season on the horizon. But beneath the surface, the earth was stirring, its tectonic plates shifting and building up pressure that would soon unleash a catastrophic display of seismic fury. Unaware of the impending doom, the people of Siena went about their evening routines, oblivious to the danger lurking beneath their feet. 
The first sign of trouble came as a low, gentle rumble, a subtle vibration that seemed to emanate from the Earth's core. At first it was almost imperceptible, causing only the most sensitive of instruments to quiver. But as the seconds ticked by, the rumble grew in intensity until it became a deafening roar that shook the very foundations of the city. The earthquake struck without warning, a series of devastating tremors that ripped through the region like a scythe through wheat. The ground split open, spewing forth great chasms of rubble and debris as buildings crumbled and collapsed. The once sturdy walls of Siena's ancient structures now lay in ruins their stones tumbling down like a house of cards in the face of the earth's fury. Panic set in as the people of Siena scrambled to escape the destruction. They ran through the streets, screaming and crying as they desperately sought shelter from the falling debris. The sound of crashing stones and splintering wood filled the air, a cacophony of chaos that seemed to have no end. As the earthquakes continued to ravage the city, the obsidian supply chain, the lifeblood of Siena's thriving trade, began to falter. The quarries located in nearby hills were among the hardest hit, their tunnels and shafts collapsing under the intense seismic activity. The precious obsidian, so highly prized for its razor-sharp edges and glossy black sheen, was now trapped beneath the rubble, inaccessible to the desperate merchants who relied on it for their livelihood. The marketplaces once bustling with merchants from all over the Mediterranean were now empty, and still, the stalls once filled with an array of exotic wares lay in ruins, their colorful silks and spices scattered across the ground. The people of Siena, who had grown so accustomed to the, uh, the steady flow of goods and commerce, were now faced with a very real possibility of economic collapse. As the earthquakes finally began to subside, the people of Siena emerged from their shelters, blinking in the bright sunlight to survey the devastation. The city lay in ruins, its once proud buildings now nothing more than piles of rubble and dust. The obsidian supply chain, the backbone of the city's economy, was broken, leading the people of Siena to wonder if they would ever recover from the devastating blow. The Sini's obsidian crisis had begun. A disaster that would have far-reaching consequences for the entire region and would be remembered for generations to come. As the earth convulsed beneath their feet, the people of Renaissance Italy were oblivious to the catastrophic consequences that would soon unfold. A series of powerful earthquakes struck the region in 6891 BCE, disrupting the delicate balance of trade and commerce that had been meticulously cultivated over centuries. One of the most critical commodities affected by this natural disaster was obsidian, a prized volcanic glass, renowned for its razor-sharp edges and mesmerizing beauty. The earthquake's violent tremors and deafening roars sent shock waves through the landscape, awakening ancient faults and triggering a cascade of landslides. The once stable hillsides, now destabilized, came crashing down, unleashing torrents of rock soil and debris onto the main trade routes. The roads carefully carved into the rugged terrain by generations of merchants and travelers were transformed into treacherous obstacle courses. Merchants who had grown accustomed to the relative ease of transporting goods along these routes faced an unprecedented challenge. The landslides had blocked the narrow mountain passes, rendering them impassable to even the most skilled and daring of traders. As the sound of crashing boulders and splintering trees still echoed through the valleys, merchants struggled to comprehend the magnitude of the disaster. The ancient Via Obsidiana, which wound its way through the Apennine Mountains, connecting the obsidian-rich regions of Tuscany to the bustling markets of Siena, was one of the most critical trade routes affected. This vital artery, once pulsing with the lifeblood of commerce, was now choked by the rubble of fallen rocks and uprooted trees. Merchants, who had relied on this route to supply the demand for obsidian tools and trinkets, were forced to abandon their caravans, leaving them stranded and helpless in the face of the unyielding landscape. As the days turned into weeks, the full extent of the disaster became apparent. The landslides had not only blocked the trade routes, but had also destroyed entire villages and towns, leaving countless people homeless and without livelihoods. The once thriving markets of Siena, which had grown fat on the profits of obsidian trade, teetered on the brink of collapse. The city's merchants, who had grown wealthy on the back of this lucrative commerce, were forced to confront the very real possibility of financial ruin. 
As the people of Renaissance Italy struggled to come to terms with the scale of the disaster, the obsidian trade, which had been the lifeblood of the region, began to wither and die. The earthquakes and landslides had dealt a devastating blow to the economy, sending shock waves that would be felt for generations to come. The Cini's obsidian crisis, as it would come to be known, marked a turning point in the history of Renaissance Italy, a poignant reminder of the fragility of human endeavor in the face of nature's fury. As the Cini's obsidian crisis intensified, the intricate trade networks of Renaissance Italy began to unravel. The mysterious disappearance of obsidian, a vital commodity since the Neolithic era, sent shockwaves throughout the region, triggering a devastating chain reaction. The price of obsidian skyrocketed to unprecedented heights, crippling the economy and plunging the region into chaos. In Siena's bustling marketplaces, merchants and traders huddled together, their faces etched with worry and concern. The usual din of commerce was replaced by an air of desperation as buyers and sellers scrambled to secure even the smallest quantities of the precious stone. The sound of clinking coins and rustling fabrics was drowned out by the murmur of anxious whispers as the reality of the situation began to sink in. The, the price of obsidian once a staple of Neolithic trade, had risen to exorbitant levels. A single shard of the glossy black stone, once worth a few copper coins, now commanded a small fortune. The cost of even the most basic tools and utensils crafted from the durable and versatile material became prohibitively expensive. The very fabric of Neolithic society, built upon the foundation of obsidian trade, began to fray. As economic instability took hold, social unrest simmered just beneath the surface. In rural villages and towns, where obsidian had long been a staple of daily life, the effects were felt most acutely. Farmers, unable to afford the tools necessary to till the soil, watched as their crops withered and died. Artisans, reliant on obsidian for their craft, found themselves without a means of supporting their families. The once peaceful streets of Siena became a hotbed of tension as protests and demonstrations erupted in response to the crisis. Angry villagers, armed with makeshift signs and torches, marched through the city, demanding action from the authorities. The air was thick with the smell of smoke and sweat as the sounds of chanting and shouting filled the air. In the midst of the chaos, Siena's ruling elite struggled to maintain order. The city's leaders, caught off guard, by the sudden crisis, scrambled to find a solution to the obsidian shortage. Emergency meetings were convened as officials and advisors poured over maps and trade routes, searching for a way to restore the flow of obsidian into the region. As the days turned into weeks, the situation continued to deteriorate. The price of obsidian showed no signs of relenting and social unrest began to boil. In the countryside, bands of marauders and thieves preyed upon the vulnerable, taking advantage of the power vacuum created by the crisis. The very foundations of Neolithic society built upon the principles of trade and cooperation seemed on the brink of collapse. In the face of such uncertainty, the people of Siena could only watch in horror as their world was turned upside down. The Sienese obsidian crisis a disaster of unprecedented proportions had brought their civilization to the brink of chaos. As the price of obsidian continued to soar, the future of the Neolithic era hung precariously in the balance, threatening to topple the delicate social structures that had been built over centuries. As the obsidian trade route slumbered, the Sienes people confronted the harsh realities of an economy in ruins. The once thriving markets where merchants had proudly displayed their wares now stood empty and forlorn, a poignant testament to the devastating impact of the obsidian crisis. Desperation seeped into the hearts of the Sienese as they scrambled to find a solution to their predicament. In their quest to revive their economy, the Sienese turned to alternative materials hoping to fill the void left by the absence of obsidian. Flint with its dull grayish hue and quartz, with its sparkling crystalline structure, became the focal points of their attention. Artisans who had once honed their skills on the prized volcanic glass now adapted to these new, inferior substitutes. The streets of Siena, once filled with the rhythmic sound of hammering and chiseling, now echoed with the dull thud of flint being shaped into crude tools. The air, once thick with the smell of obsidian dust, was now heavy with the acrid scent of flint particles. The Sienese people, accustomed to the precision and beauty of obsidian, struggled to come to terms with the rough, unyielding nature of these alternative materials. 
In the workshops, master craftsmen who had spent years perfecting their techniques now found themselves struggling to coax even the simplest of shapes from the flint and quartz. The delicate lace-like patterns that had once adorned the finest Sienese blades were replaced by crude, uneven lines, a testament to the limitations of these substitutes. As the Sienese people attempted to adapt to their new reality, they couldn't help but feel a sense of loss and longing for the obsidian that had once brought them such prosperity. The memory of its glossy black surface haunted them, a constant reminder of what they had lost. Despite their best efforts, the Sienese people couldn't shake off the feeling that they were merely going through the motions, creating tools and trinkets that were but a pale imitation of their former masterpieces. The flint and quartz, no matter how hard they tried, simply couldn't replicate the beauty, precision, and magic of obsidian. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, the Sienese people began to realize that their economy, once the envy of the region, was now on the brink of collapse. The obsidian crisis, which had started as a mere disruption, had blossomed into a full-blown catastrophe, leaving in its wake a trail of broken dreams and shattered livelihoods. The Sienese people, once proud and self-assured, were now forced to confront the harsh reality of their new circumstances and the inferior materials that had become their only hope. As the Sienese obsidian crisis worsened, the once thriving markets of Siena lay deserted their stalls formerly overflowing with exotic goods, now stood empty, a poignant testament to the desperation gripping the city. The people of Siena, renowned for their cunning and resourcefulness, were at a loss, their livelihoods threatened by the sudden disruption of the obsidian trade. Against this backdrop of uncertainty, a group of brave merchants led by the enigmatic Ava concocted a daring plan to salvage their city's fortunes. Ava, a woman of unparalleled charm and conviction, had built a reputation as a shrewd trader and navigator. Her piercing green eyes seemed to bore into the souls of those she met, inspiring an unwavering trust in her abilities. With her infectious confidence, she proposed the audacious scheme to bypass the blocked trade routes by braving the treacherous waters of the Tyrrhenian Sea. The risks were palpable, but Ava's leadership soon rallied a motley crew of seasoned sailors, burly stevedores and eager young traders behind her banner. On a crisp autumn morning, the merchant fleet comprising five sturdy galleys set sail from the Sienese port of Talamon. The vessels, their sails emblazoned with the emblem of the Sienese Republic, cut through the gentle waves of the Ligurian Sea, bound for the open waters of the Tyrrhenian. As they sailed, the crew busied themselves with the intricate preparations necessary for the perilous journey ahead. Ropes were meticulously coiled, anchors tested, and the hulls of the ships caulked to ensure water tightness. As the sun began its lazy descent into the horizon, the fleet encountered the first signs of trouble. The winds, which had been favorable until then, began to shift, carrying the whispers of a brewing storm. Ava, ever the pragmatist, ordered her crew to take in the sails, and the galleys rode out the turbulent night, their hulls creaking and groaning beneath the force of the waves. The storm raged on for two days, testing the mettle of the sea and these sailors. The ships were tossed about like toys, their crews clinging to the decks as the winds howled and the lightning illuminated dark skies. Ava's leadership was truly tested as she moved from ship to ship, her voice carrying above the din of the storm, exhorting her crew to hold fast, to trust in her guidance, and to believe in the righteousness of their quest. Finally, the storm began to subside, leaving in its wake a trail of destruction and debris. The Sienese fleet, battered but unbroken, emerged from the chaos, their sails shredded, their hulls scarred, but their spirits unshaken. As the sun broke through the clouds, Ava gathered her crew about her, their faces etched with exhaustion, their eyes red from lack of sleep. With a fierce determination burning in her heart, she addressed them, her voice carrying across the waves. We have faced the fury of the Tyrrhenian, and we have emerged victorious. We will not be deterred by the obstacles that lie ahead. We will press on driven by our unwavering commitment to our city, our people, and our way of life. We will bring obsidian back to Siena, no matter the cost. The crew, inspired by Ava's words, set to work with renewed vigor, repairing their ships and plotting a new course through the treacherous waters. The fate of Siena hung in the balance and Ava's brave band of merchants was determined to tip the scales in their favor. As they sailed on, the Tyrrhenian Sea, once a formidable barrier, 
now seemed a mere challenge, a hurdle to be overcome in their quest to restore the obsidian trade and bring prosperity back to their beloved city. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm orange glow over the bustling port city of Siena, the air was alive with the whispers of desperation. The once thriving obsidian trade, the lifeblood of the city's economy, had been crippled by the crisis that had ravaged the region for months. The usually vibrant marketplaces where merchants would eagerly haggle over the prize, volcanic glass, now lay barren and still a testament to the devastating impact of the trade disruption. Against this backdrop of uncertainty, Ava, a seasoned navigator and entrepreneur, embarked on a perilous expedition to revive the fortunes of Siena's obsidian trade. Her plan was bold and ambitious, to chart a new course through the treacherous waters of the Mediterranean, bypassing the traditional routes that had been disrupted by the crisis and forge new trade relationships with distant lands. Ava's fleet of sturdy galleys, adorned with the emblem of the Sienese Republic, cut through the waves with precision, their billowing sails a vibrant splash of color against the azure sky. The crew, a diverse assembly of seasoned sailors, skilled craftsmen, and eager young adventurers, worked in tandem, their movements a testament to Ava's leadership and expertise. As the fleet navigated the unpredictable waters, the crew encountered a myriad of challenges. Fierce storms raged across the horizon, threatening to capsize the vessels, while treacherous shoals and hidden reefs lay in wait, ready to dash the ships to pieces. Yet, Ava's unwavering determination and the crew's unrelenting spirit drove them forward, fueled by the promise of rediscovering the lost riches of the obsidian trade. Despite their valiant efforts, Ava's expedition ultimately failed to achieve its primary objective. The new trade routes, though charted with precision, proved treacherous and unprofitable, and the fleet was forced to return to Siena, its holds empty and its crew weary. However, in the midst of defeat, a glimmer of uh, hope emerged. The expedition, though unsuccessful in its immediate goal, had inadvertently paved the way for a new era of maritime trade. The charts and maps created during the journey, though imperfect, provided a foundation for future explorers to build upon. The relationships forged with distant lands, though tentative, held the promise of future cooperation and mutual benefit. As news of Ava's expedition spread throughout the city, a sense of renewed optimism began to take hold. Merchants, inspired by her bravery and ingenuity, began to envision new possibilities for the obsidian trade. They saw the potential for Siena to reclaim its position as a dominant force in the Mediterranean, and they set about forging new alliances and negotiating fresh trade agreements. The recovery of the Sienese obsidian trade was slow and arduous, but it was inevitable. The city's merchants, buoyed by the promise of Ava's expedition, worked tirelessly to rebuild and expand their networks. New maritime trade routes, charted with greater precision and caution, began to flourish, and the prized volcanic glass once again flowed into the city's marketplace. As the years passed, Siena's obsidian trade regained its former glory, and the city's economy began to thrive once more. The memory of Ava's expedition though ultimately unsuccessful, was enshrined as a turning point in the crisis, a testament to the power of human ingenuity and perseverance in the face of adversity. The city's merchants, inspired by her example, continued to push the boundaries of what was thought possible, forging a new era of prosperity and growth 